Now I want to try to get through this chapter. Lord help him. For in this life of only if we have hope in Christ. We're all of men most miserable. Which, which means we would deny the resurrection. But now is Christ risen from the dead. Now I want you to really track with me. Well with Paul I'm just reading. And now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruits of them that slept. Do you realize that everybody that died before Jesus was raised from the dead? Even those that died in the faith, including Father Abraham and King David and all the prophets, did not go to heaven when they died? They went into the bowels of the earth. Remember the story about the rich man and Lazarus? Wasn't a parable, folks. Lazarus is the name of a real person. Hell was divided into two compartments. One was paradise. It's called, it's called the bosom of Abraham. I tell you, when I, was, when I was learning to grow up in God and I read that, the bosom of Abraham, I wondered how many people could get in Abraham's chest cavity. It was kind of strange to me. It looked like a little bunch of pollywogs floating around inside Abraham's chest. And then <laughs> I realized I should study, maybe. So <laughs> rather than go by my, you know, imagination. So I looked up the word uh, <laughs> paradise, bosom of Abraham, and it means a large lake. It literally means a large lake. Now, that paradise in the bowels of the earth was not hot, humid, and filled with fire. Across the great gulf was lava. Across the great gulf was the lake of fire. And no man could cross this great gulf. And I know the rich man could see Lazarus. He used to beg at his, at his table over there and Father Abraham. And he, he was thirsty and he was hot and bothered and everything. And he looked over and they're having a good time over there in the oasis. And you know the story as well as I do. I don't need to go ahead and tell you this whole story. How Abraham called over to the rich man and said, you can't do it, no one can cross. And the rich man said, well then send Lazarus up top to warn my five brothers not to come to this horrible place. And you know what Abraham prophesied to this rich man? He said, sir, even though one be raised from the dead, your brothers won't believe. You know what that tells me? Jesus was raised from the dead, and, and those five brothers never did believe. There's a powerful truth in that. But the truth that I'm trying to get to you right now as we move through this is what is meant by the first fruits of the dead. You have to know that the person who died for you was Jesus the man, seed of David, that walked on the earth. He became the first human to defeat death. Track with me. He became the first human because all the others that even died in the faith didn't go to the presence of God. When you get into the prophecies of Psalm 68 and Ephesians, chapter 6, about the Lord when he descended first in the lower parts of the earth and he that descended is he that ascended far above all things. And he led captivity captive. He led those that were held by Satan in paradise. When he went there, he went in, he spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. He took all those disembodied spirits that were there with Abraham in the faith that had been captured and were there. And he took them. He led them through the valley of the shadow of death. He led them up through principalities and powers. He led them to heaven where the Father is to await the first resurrection. And that's what Jesus did to everyone that had died in the faith from Adam. If the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he shall quicken your mortal body. You have to have this assurance, but you have to prepare for your life assurance. 
There's a decision we all have to make. It's a decision to opt out. It's a decision to opt in. I'm an opt-inner. I opted out for too many years. Now I'm opting into everything I can find that's of God because it's my eternity. And the promises I have are yea and nay. The promises I have are for me and for you and whosoever will. But would you hear what I have to say? I feel like Noah preaching off the bow of the boat right now. The people that would laugh and scorn at his prophetic prediction of the future. And everything that Moses, Moses, not Moses, but Noah prophesied about the flood that was coming came and only eight people survived. It was those that died in the flood that Jesus preached that sermon to down in hell as found in 1 Peter 3, 18 and 19. When his body was in the grave clothes by the power of the Spirit, he went down there and preached a sermon to the disobedient spirits that were disobedient in the days of Noah. Read it. It is in your Bible. Sometimes I teach this and people look at me, where is he coming from? I'm coming from 1 Peter 3, 18 and 19. You can read it for yourself if you'd like. There was a prophecy given to those that died in the flood by Noah. He spoke the future. And those that died in the flood could have been saved, those that wanted to listen. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They shall be eating and drinking and making merry, giving in marriage, and then the end shall come. Foolish virgins. We have an option. And our option is very clear. Do we want to be that Adam? In the metaphorical sense. Do we want to be that son and daughter that is faithful to the Father who created us and saved us? This is more than going to Sunday school. This is more than attending church for an hour a week. This is more than from carrying a Bible. This is a matter of life assurance. I could not come and be a spiritual leader and give you a fairy tale or give you some false hope or give you something to tickle your ears. But I would come to fight for your eternal security, correctly taught and applied. Something that we can all apprehend. This whole chapter is about this. So Jesus became, what is he called here? He became the first fruits of them that slept. Those that died. For since by man came death. What man? Adam. For since by man came death, comma, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. My goodness, are you listening? For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Say, made alive. Verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. That coming is called the second coming of Christ. The first coming is when he came in the flesh. When the word became flesh is called the first coming. The second coming is is when he comes back to get his own living at the time it happens or that have died in the faith. He comes for his own from Adam. And that's what this is talking about. Verse 24, Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, that's Jesus delivering the kingdom up to God, even the Father. This would be talking about the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. 
This is the millennium. You get to help. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him because he is the head of it all because of obedience. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him. That would be the Father, that God the Father may uh, be all in all. Verse 29. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all. Why are they then baptized for the dead? There's a lot of people going baptizing the dead. What would be the purpose of that if they're not going to rise? You can try to baptize a dead person. You're wasting your time. There's a, there's a false religion in this town that practices baptism for the dead. You might even consider another sect of Christianity that has something called purgatory, which you can work out your sins to prevent the judgment seat. It's a halfway house that you can go through and you can work out your salvation after you've died. The Bible says this is appointed unto a man wants to die, then the judgment. Doesn't say halfway house. Doesn't say you baptize the dead. How can you baptize the dead? You're going to get their bodies out of the grave? And how can you baptize the dead? They're not even there. Spiritually, they either went to heaven or they went to hell. It's as simple as that, folks. So how can you baptize somebody that's not there except a cadaver? That doesn't make any sense, does it? But there are complete religions that are giving people false hope of eternity by offering absolution from sin, baptism for the dead, and a halfway house of sanctification in between death and judgment. Don't be deceived. We're going to leave off here. What verse am I in? Thank you so much. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus. Our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is me, what advantageth it me, if the dead rise not. In other words, what's the purpose if I <laughs> defeat a beast and I myself die with no hope? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. This is a common theme, even in America. Eat, drink, and be merry. How many of you have heard people say, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die? They don't realize that's a very dangerous thing to say. Verse 33, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Am I getting to the second Adam yet? Oh, yeah, he's way over here. Let me skip over here because I see my time's getting away. Now, let's go over here. All flesh is, now I'm in verse 39. All flesh, oh boy, is not the same flesh. You know, it's too bad these chapters are so long. All flesh. We'll come back Sunday. No, no, no. We want people to come back. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds, we noticed. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There's one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differed from another star in glory. That would be brightness. So also is a resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. Now, in the resurrection, mortality shall put on immortality, and we shall be like him. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, 
and is raised in power. This is some of your prophetic blessings if you want to hang and be an overcomer. You may be struggling in your life feeling like you're corrupt and have corruption and you may you may feel like you know you're dishonored and you're weak and you're all this stuff and you're you know you're struggling through life. Let me tell you something. You're just a pilgrim. And that pilgrim will encounter great difficulties in their journey. It's part of the fall of Adam. Don't you think God was responsible for the fall of Adam? Adam was responsible for the fall of Adam. And every son after that is responsible for one thing or another. And so it says here, it is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Let me tell you what's coming to you. The Bible says in that day you shall be like him. In the first resurrection, you shall be like him. When corruption puts on incorruption and mortality puts on immortality according to Scripture. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he could appear in a room and never walk through the door. That's in your Bible. He'd be in the room, then poof, he was gone. That's what's coming to you. I always like to, I like to say this because all of you are being called to be kings and priests, you know. You may not feel like one today, but you've got to start thinking about it. If you're called to be a king and a priest under Messiah, you need to start thinking about that eternal calling. This is OJT time right here in your generation. I know we all say that and go, oh, that's so hard to be a Christian. Why are you talking about you're the seed of everything. You're the, you're the crown jewel of his, of his death and resurrection. You are the absolute object of the Father's love. You absolutely are the seed of eternity that's good. You need to see yourself the way God sees you from the foundation of the world. And I, I was at years ago sometimes in teaching is that if you can appear in a room and never walk through the door, I said, yeah, Maybe God will give you a city and you're the priest over that city and you've got these natural people you rule over that still want to fornicate. And uh, there's a couple going into adultery and they're in that hotel room. They're about to commit the act of adultery and you appear right in the room and you say, excuse me, what do you two think you're doing? I'll see you in my office first thing in the morning. Now get dressed and get out of here. That's ruling with a rod of iron. But if you'll be like him, and, and you'll have a glorified body, not just that you have a natural body, but you don't know what a glorified body, or do you? Read your Bible what Jesus was like when he raised from the dead. You don't, and, and when it says you'll be like him, do you even understand the importance of that dimension of existence? Forget about beam me up Scotty. You don't have to work for some, some electronic beam to beam you up. You can be from here to Kalamazoo, Michigan at the speed of thought. Boom, boom. Because you'll translate anywhere as God wants you to go because, because you operate in a dimension beyond the molecular structure of natural man and creation. That's what? Because that's where they go to pick buttonholes. I have to tell you a story. You raised, this is part of my, my this is part of my, uh, my um, lore for my family over the years. My kids would always ask me, Dad, where are you going? Do all kids say, Dad, Mom, where are you going? It's like a stuck record. So for years when my kids would say, Dad, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Kalamazoo to get a load of buttonholes. And they'd look at me, for the worst, the word Kalamazoo was a big one that I could see them stewing how I could get a truckload of buttonholes. They understood the buttons, but they're trying to form buttonholes into something that could fill a truck. And, and they... The, the holes had, like the donut holes are used for little donuts, you know, the dough from donut holes. So these, donut, these buttonholes have to be used for something, else they wouldn't be loading trucks with them. And my kids, for, forget about wanting to go with dad. They were just standing in like, what? 
See ya. Be back later. <laughs> it's, it's just a family tradition. Kalamazoo, who knows? Who cares? I did, I did, uh, I did this some ministry years ago in Kalamazoo. I've been there. I've been, yeah, I've been to Kalamazoo and in a mission, in a, in a missionary, whatever that thing was called, we went to. Uh, anyway, you, Kalamazoo, okay, got it. That's where you get, they make buttonholes. I'm sure that was significant to you. Yeah, I thought it was awesome too. Can I get through this? Because <laughs> I'm hyperventilating. It is so in a natural body. It has raised a spiritual body. Who... Who is Paul talking about? Who said us? You mean you and people like you and me? And it's not beam me up, Scotty? Wow, I like this. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written. The first man, here we go, and I'll be done in a minute. Whew. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Are you tracking? Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. So all of us came into the world as a what? Natural being then when you yielded to God and became born again born again the spirit of God joined you and you became a spiritual being but you didn't have a spiritual body so in this resurrection business you're not only going to have a be a correct spiritual being you're going to have a glorified spiritual body and you, I want to tell you folks, you can operate in the physical world and the spirit world at the speed of thought. You can be in a room and never use the door. You can go into the presence of the Father in heaven, and you can be right there in the streets of Thomaston, Georgia, depending on what the Lord wants you to do. I don't want to miss this. I mean, this is better than sci-fi. I mean, everybody's into, you know, you know, I don't tell my age here, but when I was a kid growing up. I used to read and read a lot of stuff. Isaac Asimov. Anybody who knew who Isaac Asimov is? Anybody that's spooky has always read Isaac Asimov, because only spooky people pursue the pursue the writings of Isaac Asimov. It's all scientific sci-fi, and and I escaped that world somehow, but it was intriguing at the moment. But this is better than that world of superstition. This is better than that world. This is even better than what Hollywood can produce for you. Because what Hollywood is doing to try to, 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 to train your children to Spookyville is never going to happen. You'll never, kids, you'll never become a transformer. You'll never become a transformer. But you can be transformed into his image. Now, I'd rather be transformed in his image than be a spooky transformer. Can you imagine walking normal or walking? If, if, if I came in here walking, you'd ask me, what's wrong with me? When I walk in here normal, you say, well, you don't even pay attention to me. Maybe I should act like a transformer. I'd get more attention. Oh, come on, guys. Can I finish this? I've got to get through this. The first man is of the earth. I'm in verse 47. The second man is the Lord from heaven. See, Jesus the man did not come from the dust of the earth. He's the only begotten of the Father. Yes, there was an incarnation in the womb of Mary. Yes, yes, there was an egg that got energized there was an egg that came with something that made him a physical being after the flesh no question about it but this man wasn't just earthy or sensual 
This man had a heart for God, his father. This was a son of God that was different than Adam, son of God. This was a son of God that was obedient to his father, not as the first Adam was disobedient. And so we get into this discourse here, here in 1 Corinthians, in finishing. Um, uh, the first man is of the earth, earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. Verse 48. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as in the heavenly, such are they which are heavenly. How many have ever seen earthy people? Earth, just earthy, carnal people. How many have seen people that sometimes become heavenly minded? So some of us, though we're natural, we do have a mind and a heart for heavenly things. Other people have no desire for heavenly or spiritual things. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. See, when the first Adam was created, he was created in God's image. What, when he rebelled, what joined him was the opposite of God's image. The second Adam is God's image, and it is not, he did not give up his image of God. Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood, now listen carefully. Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a great mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. This is the people that are either standing here when this happens or that have already died. This is called the first resurrection. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, because if you pursue this in that day, you should be raised from the dead. And isn't that a wonderful historical promise? Pastor Don, I'm finished. Wow, that'll wear you out teaching all that stuff. I don't know how Paul got his mind around all that stuff. Boy, it's deep. But did you see yourself in it? See, we are now formed in the image of the second Adam. That's what happened at the new birth. Would you let God continue to form you? Well, it's a decision we make, isn't it? Where'd Pastor Donna go? All right, take your time. Phew, I'm out of breath. I want, I'm looking forward to the first resurrection. Are you? I don't want to miss it. You can forget about that other one. I don't want to be part of that one. Hey, girl. I'm out of breath. I'm going back to being earthy right now. <laughs>